On 15th October 1987, one of Africa's best presidents was assassinated. Since then, the word prosperity and peace do not exist in the country's vocabulary. Hey guys, let's look at the biography of Thomas Isidore Noel Sankara, better known as Thomas Sankara. Sankara was born in 1947, Upper Volta, currently Burkina Faso. At the age of 17, in 1966, he joined the military and rose through the ranks. In 1970, he would go for further training in Madagascar. The training was intense and equipped Sankara with several skills, including agriculture, which he would apply later. Fast forward to 1981, Sankara was appointed as the Minister of Information. During his short stint as a minister, Sankara distinguished himself as the people's servant. Can you imagine an African member of parliament leave alone a minister cycling to work? Well, Sankara just did that. He would resign in April 1982 before becoming the prime minister on November the same year after a coup. His stint as the prime minister was short-lived since he was dismissed on May 1983 and arrested for his involvement in championing for Red Gold Revolution. His friend at the time, Blaise Compaore, would lead another coup d'etat on August the same year and Sangara would be released from prison and made the upper Volta's president at the age of 33 years. Wow. Sankara's leadership is lauded by many as revolutionary for several reasons. First, unlike the African presidents and the associates who lived throughout their tenure, Sankara capped his salary to a mere $462 per month. In Sankara's opinion, Burkina Faso and Africa at large could become self-sufficient with minimal support from the Western world. Let's look at some, some of Sankara's achievements. First, he vaccinated over 2 million children against yellow fever, measles, and meningitis. Two, he increased cereal production by 75% in three years between 1983 and 1986. Three, he built medical dispensaries in every village throughout the country. And four, he dismissed over 1,000 government officials who had been found guilty of embezzling funds and corruption. Sankara's speech never resonated with the French who were on a mission to enslave Africa through debts and taking their natural resources. Adopte la nécessité de dire clairement que nous ne pouvons pas payer la dette. Non pas dans un esprit belliqueux, belliciste. Ceci pour éviter que nous n'allions individuellement nous faire assassiner. Si le Burkina Faso tout seul refuse de payer la dette, je ne serai pas là à la prochaine conférence. Faisons en sorte également que le marché africain soit le marché des Africains. Produire en Afrique. Transformer en Afrique et consommer en Afrique. Produisons ce dont nous avons besoin et consommons ce que nous nous produisons au lieu d'importer. Le Burkina Faso est venu vous exposer ici la cotonnade produite au Burkina Faso, tissée au Burkina Faso, cousue au Burkina Faso pour habiller les Burkinabés. Ma délégation et moi-même nous sommes habillés par nos tisserands, nos paysans. Il n'y a pas un seul fil qui vienne de l'Europe ou de l'Amérique. To tame his aggressive approach to contemporary issues, the French government used Sankara's closest friend, Blaise Compaore, to finish him off. Prior to his death, Sankara had received numerous intelligence reports about Blaise's plan to assassinate him, but he brushed them off. On the date of his death, Sankara had called for a meeting with the National Revolutionary Council to come up with a solution to problems which students across the country addressed. Immediately after the meeting had started, a screeching of tires and gunfire rendered the hair. That night, Blaise Compaore assumed presidency and ruled until 2014 when he resigned and fled to Côte d'Ivoire. Although Blaise Compaore was finally sentenced to life imprisonment in April 2022, his involvement in the death of Sankara will never be forgotten.